Chapter LV, The Bulgarians, The Hungarians, and the Russians, Part 2 It is the observation of the imperial author of the tactics, 29 that all the Scythian hordes resembled each other in their pastoral and military life, that they all practiced the same means of subsistence, and employed the same instruments of destruction. But he adds, that the two nations of Bulgarians and Hungarians were superior to their brethren, and similar to each other in the improvements however rude, of their discipline and government, their visible likeness determines Leo to confound his friends and enemies in one common description, and the picture may be heightened by some strokes from their contemporaries of the 10th century. Except the merit and fame of military prowess, all that is valued by mankind appeared vile and contemptible to these barbarians, whose native fierceness was stimulated by the consciousness of numbers and freedom. The tents of the Hungarians were of leather, their garments of fur, they shaved their hair and scarified their faces, in speech they were slow, in action. Prompt in treaty perfidious, and they shared the common reproach of barbarians, too ignorant to conceive the importance of truth, too proud to deny or palliate the breach of their most solemn engagements. Their simplicity has been praised, yet they abstained only from the luxury they had never known, whatever they saw they coveted, their desires were insatiate, and their sole industry was the hand of violence and rapine.